Hello and welcome to my fish room. I'm Lucas, AKA LRB, a professional professional that sometimes gets tired of being professional. I will be the man behind the camera and welcome to my fish room. All right, the fish room tour, it's been a while. Let's jump into it. All right, let's break this down by section. So over here, this was gonna be, and mind my plumbing, I've got plumbing all over the place. I'm working on a water change system for this huge water change system lots of parts and pieces but anyways this is supposed to be my cichlid area ended up being guppies and rice fish for now this will end up being my plant area it's something different now so all this is going to change once i get water changes going now that i got my fry rack which you guys will be seeing and why i'm doing this fish room tour because a lot of this is going to change from these two big things happening. But back here, the front of it will be more for gallery, it'll be in wall. And behind it, I consider this more my lab where I will play around with like bringing different types of fish and stuff. And then next to that, this is the shrimp rack. So this will house all my shrimp, my Neo Caridina, my Caridina, and eventually some saltwater shrimp too. And behind it is a massive fry grow out space just full of 20 longs and you'll see why i need all these the other view of the shrimp rack which i'm still working on and getting some tanks in and haven't quite got all my shrimp yet because i'm looking for good shrimp good strains i'll get this all cleaned up eventually too scrap wood and we do got plants up above a lot that lady lrb is working on and she's been doing a fantastic job adding some plants in here really get them growing and going and if you're a girl that's into plants aquariums hit us up we're looking for friends and check out our channel lady lrb plant lady sarah but anyways the next rack over here we've got this is going to be rainbow fish breeding project but on the other side of it it's going to be more for display so looking at the full front face of it it is all mostly going to be more display type of tanks as you can see but they'll be very functional. And behind it, we've got the command center with shipping and everything. My space where I look this way to where this is my desk view. And then here we've got guppies and the inler rack and then drying rack. There's also aquarium garden out here that I'm working on. I've got some tanks to still set up, some things to play with out here. Oh, that's a cat. I was like, what is coming after me? Hey kitty. And then this is where I quarantine everything before it goes into the barn. And we won't be filming much of this, but I will probably be downgrading some of this, like taking out this stuff and maybe those now that I have this nice fancy rack. As well as a few others. And back to the barn. Now that there's around 300 containers full of water i'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible by going through sections we'll go through a little bit what's in it what why is and what's happening into a lot of them and you never know what you're gonna learn tidbits i might throw out here because there's a lot of differences between a lot of these tanks as well as them all being no filter no water change for a long time a lot of these haven't even had water changes for over a year now and just top offs. Now I do and would rather have water changes. Hence why I'm doing all the plumbing for the big old water change system that I'm working on. Well, let's go ahead and start over here to where the cichlid rack, AKA the guppy and rice fish rack is now. So over here on this rack, we have 1220 highs, as I mentioned, full of guppies and rice fish. And as you can see, there's a lot of rock work. There's even some fossils, lots of fossils in these rocks as well. Which I got those out of my yard, that's limestone. And it's really great for adding hardness to my water, which my water is around 170 TDS, which tells me it's slightly acidic, but it also has mineralization in it from the lime all around us. And then the sand is also from the yard as well. So pretty much the sand, rock, everything free, water from the yard really only cost me the tank here. I didn't even paint the backs of it or anything. I kind of like the clear looking through of the back. I used to always paint them black. 
And then as the fish goes, in here I've got some baby purple red blue grass. There used to be a lot more in there, not quite as many now for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on in there. It seems like the ones with the parents still in them have actually been doing better. Then here I've got some albino rice fish. So they've got the red eyes. They don't have the black eyes. They're kind of like platinums, but different with the red eyes. Now I haven't got any babies out of these yet. I haven't really pulled them and really got them into a proper space. I need to sooner and later. If I even got a male in there, a lot of them are looking female. And then next to them, I've got the blue tiger guppy babies. And dark half moon dragon guppy babies, which some of those are getting kind of big. There's a couple generations of those. That's pretty good growth for no water change in how young those really still are. And then the bluegrass babies, which a lot of you guys have been wanting some of these bluegrass and tons and tons of babies of those. And over here, I've got the half black, half yellow pastels. Absolutely beautiful guppy. They're still with the parents, tons and tons of babies. And then right below them, I have a bunch of young platinum rice fish. So all three of these are just loaded with young, young platinum rice fish. And then next to them is their parents here. Which these guys are kind of getting older. Which these guys are starting to get a little older, getting bigger, but I mean, I don't know how long they live, but they've been breeding really well for me. Next to them is actually empty tank. Do have a few of those right now since we are moving things around. And uh, a lot of these rice fish babies, now that I got the fry rack, they'll be going over towards those. But that's what those were in that last tank. Then under here, I've got some koi, red koi babies. The guppy fish, which I'll show you the parents here soon. A couple baby orange Medeca rice fish that I've got from a colony that's over in the lab. More of the red koi guppies. There's a male, or no, that's a female. But tons and tons of babies of those. There's all your buddies. Another way out back. Looking for food right now. Well, hi Kenny, I gotta do this. We gotta do a fish room tour. And then next to them, we got the ones being shy. I didn't feed them, so they wouldn't be shy. Um, this is like a, it's supposed to be a purple Moscow, but it definitely isn't. I think it's a red bluegrass. Next to them, we got the blue tiger king here. They've got babies as well. And right next to them, the bluegrass. Really gorgeous, gorgeous line. This is with no light, too. There's no light on these tanks at all. Oh, and no plants. So, for those all who think you have to have plants to do no filter, that's not quite the case. And then next to them, we've actually got four 40 gallon high, which Four is a little crazy. Definitely should have just stuck with the three. I'll be taking these four down, but I wanted to test out some Anubiuses. No water change, no nothing. These haven't even had top offs. And it's just, it'll just be unsightly for the future. So I'm gonna be taking those down. We can keep lining up plants with it. But this area is a, a whole hodgepodge. This is gonna end up being stem plants where I'll probably do CO2 system and all that stuff. Turn on this end closest to the door. I got a few straggler blue coral platies. So they have been breeding in here. You can see young there. And right next to them is a really cool tank with this red metallic crib. 
and the Cynodonis lucipennis just completely, completely covered with guppy grass. So if you guys are looking for guppy grass, I got a lot of awesome clean guppy grass. Other big cards are gone. Then next to them, these are the all other color like Dalmatian magical guppies. Which looks like I got a bunch of females right here. Oh, here's a male. That represents them well. Really, really beautiful fish. Got quite the shimmer on them. There's also a couple, there's a pair of pygmy chain loaches in there as well. And that water quality is not the best, but you know, it's not killing them. These fish, it used to be green water, then it's kind of dying off because I put the chain loaches in there to take care of some of these seed shrimp and stuff, which has been killing off the green water. Well, you know, a good water change would be good for that tank. Oh, there you can see one of the chain loaches. Love picking chain loaches. And then right up underneath them, we've got the rainbow tiger endlers, as well as a ton of just random coal shrimp. Rainbow tiger endler, and this is actually a strain I created years ago. Crossing tigers and blue stars. On top here, you can see a bunch of the, the scriddle colors. And I got this from Mandy, who has been following me for a long time and had my old scriddle line. So it's great to have those shrimp genetics. Then the plant is just, it's loaded with Valicinaria. He's actually out. And then next to them, I have the Pleco. I think that's a 333. Got two of them, but I think they're both male. I don't really know what to do with them since they'll never breed, but I've been hanging on to them forever. Also, baby Glossolepis maculosus swimming around in there. Which, I may have a straggler. Yeah, I got a couple stragglers of maculosis right up underneath them, too. So, looks like a pair. I always hang on to a couple from the generations. But next to the Plicos, you got these Clossio... You got these Clossioensis rainbow fish, which is a much, much rare rainbow fish. Super shy. Always want to run away from me. Kind of got some red on them. Come on, glare. Oh, it's not letting me get them very well. Rare rainbow fish. Hope to work with them more here in the future once I get the rainbow tanks going. And then up underneath them, a dirty neglected tank, as a lot of them are. But it's nature. Nature is dirty, you know. We've got gold dust mollies. Got a few of them. There's Cynodonis cats in there as well, but... Oh, there's one. Came out. Beautiful one, too. Specimen. A lot of white to them. Try to breed them towards more of the white. And then the couple maculosis that I showed earlier. There's actually a bunch of plants growing up underneath this algae, so if I would just pull this out, I'd have a ton of beautiful plants. Kind of like this, not quite like that, but believe it or not, there's a lot of plants just growing up underneath this stuff. Here you can kind of see the crypts growing up underneath it. And then you also see a bunch of bright little eyes these are these rare rice fish, Montio, Montanio ensis, something like that. It's a bigger rice fish, India rice fish. So that does it for that wall section. Guess we'll go ahead and start at the front of this. So a lot of you guys know me for these barbs and I've been doing a breeding project with them. You can see they still got some young in them. I have found out that having the rocks all the way across was much better than just having them mounded up like this. Now I do got a couple of babies in that tank. 
Let me see one. There's one right there. It's kind of older now. But that's all that's in there. I still got to catch them out. And then we'll reset, do something else. And then underneath them, it's really hard to see in. Which is nice about these tanks is I can get on either side of them, front or back. Big reason why I keep the tank and glass dirty too is for these Pantagoras. And luckily it just kind of works out that way, but these guys love it. There you can see the barbs going by. And, and as far as tank sizes, these are 75s, 50 gallon low boys, 75, 75s, and then 55s turned on their sides. But here in these low boys, these are Pygmaea rainbow fish. Make sure you can see them a bit better. Absolutely beautiful, unique, smaller rainbow fish. They don't get very big, hence the name Pygmaea. Pygmy. Kind of like this white and blue and then get this orange on their head this tank doesn't display in the best get them on a black background oh my god and then in the low boy up underneath them we've got a ton of baby dwarf neon rainbow fish all waiting to go to the fry rack And then the 75 up underneath them, this is where the Cynodonis catfish will end up going. Kind of hard to see in it, but if you look in there, there's a ton of Daphnia that's in there just waiting and ready for them too. And then next to the low boys, we got the 75 over here with these rare Selfin shiners, these are hypolepterous. Always trying to work with the glare on these guys, but these guys are gorgeous. Really neat native, which there is just absolutely a ton of babies. Look at all these babies up here within their tank. It's loaded, absolutely loaded. Some of them are getting big too. And then up underneath them, we got a couple rope fish, three rope fish. They like to weave in and through the rocks. I'm not, I mean, it's kind of neat seeing them do that. They are kind of skittish. So they're more shy. I would definitely like to do a nicer setup for these guys with like leaf litter, reed sticks and whatnot. And then I've got a random rainbow fish in here as well. I absolutely love my rope fish. Although they are shy, they can still be very personal. Like here comes the other one. I do got one more in the house, so I will have four of them all together. But look at that. So cool. And then underneath that tank in this monstrosity is a endless tank of dwarf neon so this is my breeders come on there you go turn to the side there you go turn to the side there look at that nice beautiful bright blue which this tank is usually full of babies but i do i waited too long to feed them you guys ate them all what hold on this is usually just top full with babies and how do I not see any? Ain't no way they cleaned them out. Granted, their community's been getting bigger so they can eat more, but... Big reason why I gotta feed them in time. Which I actually held off on feeding these guys for this fish room tour. Or these guys wouldn't have been out. A lot of these fish just wouldn't have been out. Alright, and then let's hit up these 55s on the sides. Can't wait to get these cleared out, kind of cleaned out, reorganized, redesigned. I mean, they're all just packed in with guppy grass right now, plants and or green water. But it'll be neat to just see something like escape down the side. So when you come in through the door and then you look down, it'll be cool. I gotta get to that point. But up top in the green water, we've got the orange Medeca rice fish. 
which this line's been doing pretty well. There's actually quite a few babies in here with them. Not seeing them right now. Hopefully they didn't eat them as well. There should be some babies in there. And then below them, more dwarf, more dwarf neon rainbow fish. This thing is just chocked full of them. You can see them coming, swimming. I'm getting bigger size too. And up underneath them, a massive amount of coral blue platies. Now these guys are always hungry. Yum, 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 yum. They're ready to eat, but look at that guppy grass. How beautiful is all that guppy grass? Gorgeous. Oh, and quite a few of these tanks, they do have like random straggler shrimp and stuff. Here you can see some reds. It's where I'll throw coals sometimes, but after a while, I mean, coals be throwing some good shrimp. Which brings us to this back end here, which these are 20 gallon highs. This rack actually came from my old house. I still got all the old stickers on it. If you guys remember from the old fish room, the fish house that I sold. And then I mocked up another one. So we got three, six, nine. We got 18 twenties here, which in the first one closer to the fry rack area, kind of like workspace. I know different fry rack. I got, you gotta have multiple fry racks. These are CPDs. There's actually a baby there, CPD. Uh, most of the adults are hiding here. We're not gonna be able to see them within here. They breed all up through this. And next to them, we've got some Silvies half beaks, some bigger ones all grown out now. And next to them is a empty tank. Used to have some Cottle Punk Tottis in there, but ended up selling them. And then I've got more rice fish babies up here which I'll show you the parents. The parents are actually down here. These guys are the parents here. Beautiful yellow, beautiful blue eyes. I got some pattern to them. Neat tight grouping fish. They do stay together. Kind of like a rice fish meets the Glossolepis maculosus rainbow fish. But this one tank is another group of babies of those. And then here we got a bunch of platinum rice fish that have been getting a lot bigger. Grown out. And then next to them is a pair of Millennium Orange Albino Rainbow Fish Juvenile. They like younger babies. There's also some orange shrimp in there. And then right below them is a ton of red shrimp, which I actually should have fed the shrimp first. Because it's a lot easier to see them whenever they're up top trying to eat. But these three tanks are loaded with them. And then below them we have the yellow neocaridinas. These things are a really great line. Then next to these parents, we have some cardinal tetras. I hope they breed a bunch of them at some point because I've always just wanted a bunch of them. That's the best way to get a bunch of fish is to learn how to breed them. And then next to them, I've got a selective group of swamp guppies. Actually. Actually, a selective pair, which is the Microprocellia pictos, which I got a bunch of them in another tank, but this female was so colorful, I wanted to try to feed her specifically. And then up underneath them, next to those, there's a bunch of baby younger of those same rice fish, those yellow Matioensis. As well as in this tank too, there's younger ones. Everywhere, babies everywhere. 
which is why that's so important. And then over here, which I think in time, this may become like a killifish breeding area, but I want to be able to focus onto that when I actually do it. I don't want to half do my breeding for killifish because then it could be problematic. But as far as their sump, the sump for this is just loaded with shellies, a shell dweller, and then as well as some black mollies. Looks like there's lime green in there. I think there's some rice fish in here as well. And I do got a bucket and pump for when I do need to do water changes for if any time like a tank tries to go foul or something. Because sometimes the algae can die all the way or the green water can die all the way and cause problems for your tank. And now let's jump over into this. So this is the big mega fry rack section area. Holds 79 20 gallon longs. This is going to be for grow out. And all the little fry babies that you've seen, that is everywhere. Once I can organize all those, it'll be a lot easier to stay programmed on breeding certain fish and doing certain things. But not a whole lot in here yet since they are still kind of fresh. Letting them marinate. I want to do a bunch of moss in here. So I haven't quite put anything in here yet until it marinates. I don't know why my camera is being such a pain in the... But I do got some male lime green antlers. One of these tanks. So cool. And then the shrimp rack. So here we got 40 gallons. We've got yellow neocaridinas, blue caridinas, red caridinas. So here we got six 40 gallon breeders. Starting from the top. Beautiful, 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 beautiful line of yellow neocaridinas. And below them, oh, looks like we got a rabbit snail. These are the Blue Dream neocaridinas, the straightest line in the world. I've been working these for 10 years plus. Got all the mutations out of the Blue Dreams that are out there now. Camera does not want to stay focused on these little guys. Look how saw the lineage is. They breed pretty much true. Which, it's hard to see. I put a lot of that lime rock in there, but this reflection is horrible. Eventually, I'm going to work on the lighting in here to where the reflection's not so bad. That's kind of way down the line, though. And then below them... We've got the fire, fire reds. I need to get this algae out of here because it's just taking over the rock pile. But it is tough when there's that many shrimp in there. You gotta do it slow and meticulously. We're just pulling it out little by little and then making sure ain't no shrimp getting clung and stuck to it. You don't wanna throw them little guys out. That would be horrible. The next beside them, which this is Bacopa Carolina just growing like crazy. Yeah, it's going nuts in this tank. But inside of it, there's a ton of crystal red shrimp in this tank. Look at the roots. It's crazy. Once again, driftwood with these guys. And right above them, a bunch of guppy grass and reflection. Boom. Just saw one in here. Oh, there he is. Fancy black tiger. Fancy, fancy black tiger. And up above them, man, this glass is so dirty. Makes it a real pain in the butt. And then the one up top here has red fancy tigers. And I don't think my camera's gonna focus for me. Oh, there's one, come on camera. Come on, capture them, capture the shrimp. Oh man, he ain't gonna do it. He ain't gonna do it, why is this so fuzzy? Hope you guys realize what I gotta go through for these videos for you guys. 
Uh, barely. It wasn't easy, but there's a glimpse. All right, let's go ahead and flip to the sides here. Now, one side's dark substrate and one side's light substrate of these 20s that are behind these 40 gallons. So as you can see, this little lighter sand, substrate, sand from my yard, some of it's Carib Sea. Starting in this first 20 gallon, there's actually some coal, red and black tiger that I put together, fancy reds. Next to them, I got some, I wanna throw this phone so bad due to the lack of the camera and the focus and the fuzz really irritating us. I guess they dumbed down the iPhone X now that the 15's out. Next to them is like this blue dream carbon really kind of mix thing I was messing with, but didn't really have time to focus on it much. It's kind of lighter blues. Next to them we got some blue bolts which also have some pink that comes out of some of them which is really wild, I'm not seeing any of the pink ones. Really don't know why my camera does not want to focus for these guys for you guys. But as you can see, they're in like pure black water here. A chunk of driftwood floating up on top of their tank. Since it hasn't had any water changes, it's just turned into a T. I guess they just, I think. There's some blue bolts. And next to them, I got some more crystal reds, different line. Actually has a couple of black Medeca Orochi rice fish, which I need to get out of that tank. And then I've also got the, and then I've got the crystal blacks right next to them, looking more like crystal browns in this black water. No air stone, tap water, no special mineralization, no special substrate, no special nothing. They do like water changes though. And then up underneath these, this was supposed to be a green line. I haven't really gone through it and seen how well and the odds and probability is with the shrimp, but they have definitely been breeding out a lot. Then next to it, there's, I think, a baby rice fish, platinum medeca in there. I don't think there's any shrimp in there yet. And then medeca rice fish, you know, because that's shrimp. And next to them are the Orochi black medecas. Next to them, I've got a bunch of yellow rabbit snails as well. There's orange eye blue tigers, but most of them are blonde. A lot of blue to them. You can see the leaf litter and stuff that I have in with them. Very natural substrate, all from the yard. Same with the rock. And as you can see with the other empty tanks, I've got room to grow as far as specimens. And then my water pump will be in there. And then on this side with the 640 gallons, I'm planning on getting into like the Sulwazy shrimp and then these are going to be for the saltwater fire red shrimp that i want to get and then these might be another sulwazy i haven't quite figured it out yet we'll see what happens with these two because i do need a caradina cold tank and a neo caradina cold tank so i may use some of these i don't know which one's going to be which yet cold tank i probably want in the middle because i could play with it more We'll see. Well, here on the other end, once again, the top and bottom tanks, they don't have anything in there yet. It's still room to grow, but let's go ahead and get into this side tank first. You can see these Julia Chromis of Marlarite. I didn't even get close to them. I just literally pointing the camera at them. And they freaked out on that. Beautiful Tanzanink and smaller cichlid. I'm braiding like crazy in there. I gotta get them out. They're supposed to go into their cichlid rack with uh, where all the rice fish guppies are. Hey guys. 
But next to them, we got Tangerine Tigers, ton of seed shrimp in their tank. Which is gonna be really hard for the camera to focus on this tank with all the seed shrimp and things in it. But look at the top of this. This is bananas with all the pearlweed, Taiwan lily and how it's growing in there. But it is so many tangerine tigers within that tank. And next to them, we got snowball neocaridinas. Lots of pregnant ones of them. Now, I'm not a big fan of this algae in my shrimp tanks. Eventually, I want all that gone. And then in this monstrosity, which a bunch of Brazilian pennywort on top of it. There's a really nice line of... Has a really nice line of blue bolts in it, but I can't see any of them right now in that tank. Because, well, I can see one, but the camera will not focus down into the tank because it just, there's too much. There's just too much going on here. And I need a new camera. I think I dropped my phone way too many times. But next to them, I've got the blue velvet Neocaridina. So these are more of a lighter color blue dream. Kind of like the blue dream, but more lighter color as you can see. Light blue. And up underneath them, we've got yellow King Kongs and this beautiful crib. I don't know what's going on in this tank, but the plants are just doing so phenomenal. Like the crib's leaves are so waxy. There you can see a horde of the yellow King Kongs down there. And they actually throw yellow King Kong really babies. And then this tank is empty. This tank has shadow pandas. Ooh, we can see one right there. It's like a blue and black shrimp. Come on, focus on it. There we go. Beautiful, one of my favorites. And then next to them, we've got the orange neocaridinas with a few Glossolepis maculosis babies in there. See them swimming at the top. Which these oranges are throwing yellows and greens, so I haven't been offering them. And then the tank next to them is empty as well. Had some baby fish in there, the young rice fish, but they're gone, moved. So that does it for the shrimp rack over here. And the rack next to them, the rainbow tanks, the gallery, these are all gonna get moved. These all become 20 gallon highs. So I'm gonna have to get rid of all these. But now for the rainbow rack before it gets changed into actual rainbow rack because there's only a few on here right now. I've got a bunch of other tanks waiting to get ready for breeding, which I actually am not breeding, like targeted breeding any fish besides the Glossolepis maculosis, which I haven't done for a while. A lot of these babies just pop up from fish being comfortable in these setups. But down here is really cool because this Bacopa has just gone crazy wild in here. So this is Bacopa moneri. And you can see it's growing up and through the light. It actually goes into the 75, which you guys will see here soon. And also going over into this 40, which we'll show that as well. But in here, I've got another group of dwarf neon rainbow fish breeders. You gotta have your multiple groups. Look at that root coming off of that. There's some really nice miniature Anubias in there too, the petite. And next two are empty, waiting to get organized with some rainbows for them. Got some volcano guppies in the this other one, which I think I only got a couple of females in this tank at least. Also known arctic guppies, whatever you want to call those. And then in here, this plant is actually grown from the yard. I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of like a sword, but like a crib. Or, I don't know. I love the leaf texture though. You can see how it grows up. 
Inside here are some female Glossolepis mac. Oh, there's one. Glossolepis maculosis rainbow female. Rare spotted rainbow fish. Not normal for a rainbow fish. And then this tank is empty. I've also got this like bladder wart type of plant in here, which had come from the yard as well in this wet area. I was grabbing it. I gotta remove all that. And next to them, I've got some baby Glossolepis maculosis. And look at the mineralization and the fuzz of algae on the side of the tank. This is a great tank for fry. Now, the thing with rainbows is you'll get a ton of babies out of them, but it's like the strongest only survive and eat the others. Now, if, I think if I was doing water changes, I'd have better success with more, with more numbers as far as those go. And once again, why that's really important. Hey, what is that guy doing in there? Hey, you're ruining my program. Well, I did have, I do got Glossolepis maculosis rainbow pear in here in this massive amount of guppy grass. Looks like I got a male rainbow tiger antler in there as well. I have to get him out. And going back up onto this top row here. I've got more of those baby yellow rice fish. I've been showing you guys and things just been breeding like crazy when I had them in this 40 gallon. A lot of beautiful yellow shrimp in there and an absolutely huge red metallic crip mother load. As far as tank sizes here, this is like a two and a half. This one's like a 13. Those are like 14s, 10s, two and a half. Five gallons, tens, and that's a 20. And then we've got more tens and a five. This may be 14 gallons, these may be 16 gallons. I don't remember, I got those a long time ago. Real weird layout. But next to this tank is a little two and a half, which has a bunch of the pagai rainbow fish babies that had grown up in here. I can't believe how big these things have gotten in to like, so in comparison, this is a two and a half gallon, and I had thrown a bunch of fry in there. These are the guys that raised up in here. No water change. These guys are no water change. Grown from baby to that size. I would say probably like eight months. I don't know. Six months. I don't remember. But in comparison to the 20 gallon high with just the Glossolepis maculosis, they've got all that algae in there. They've got different algae, but not quite the same. And it's definitely predation with the rainbow fish types and how they treat each other and just the luck of the draw as well with just the number. And this thing's just got algae and rock and you guys are definitely hungry. But thank God I can get them into a better space now. Because a lot of it was just trying to hold on to collections of strains of rare fish while trying to build this. So I haven't had a whole lot of time. More of the Chilinotherinia, Pagai Village, same thing. More of the Pagai Village, Chilinotherinia. More of the Pagai Village, Chilinotherinia. And then in here, I've got some half beaks. So they're scooting around here. It's kind of dark, so I have to keep it kind of darker here so they don't jump. I don't really see him, but you saw what the half beaks look like. That's actually a rainbow fish. There's one rainbow fish in here. They're gonna hide, but there's some half beaks in there. And then this one I was gonna set up, but I ended up advancing so quick in this build of the fish room that I'm not gonna set it up now. And it had been experimenting with a little baby fish in there. Little rainbow pagai village. He's grown up, he's living in there. He's just up underneath that algae. Then in here, lime green inler, a couple straggler fry grown out. Been trying to get lime green inlers out of these three tanks for quite some time. And I think I got most of them. So these are just about empty because I'm about to move all this stuff as well. And a big reason for this fish room tour, a lot of this is gonna be a lot different next time. It's kind of sad because there's a nice carpet of corkscrew bell. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet. And then this one had coals from my orange line. Look how nice that green is there. 
Nice green Neo Caradina. And they have been throwing pretty well for the green Neo Caradinas through that orange line. So I don't know, I may try to work that. And then nice Aphenus Crypt. This again used to be lime green inlers. And then into the little two and a halfs and above. So here we've got a ton of little fry of the Pagai Village rainbow fish. I had collected out of their breeding tank, which you guys are going to see here soon. This one, same situation, Pagai Village Rainbow Fish. Same situation, Pagai Village Rainbow Fish. And then over here, I got a couple baby volcano guppies in here. There's Potamagitan Gai. I've been trying to get them out of here, but oh, there's Man, they've been getting bigger in there. There's a lot more in there than I thought. I had thought I got everybody out of there, but I guess not. Those fry really hide up really good. I don't know why these guys are gonna be shy. These guys are usually not shy. Oh, uh, there they are. These guys usually aren't shy, but Warp Guy Village. You see, they do got some blue dreams living in there with them. And this one's empty. Blue Star Inlers in here, which these guys need to go into the inlet rack, which you guys will see soon. I was gonna set this up. This is yard dirt, but this is more of the clumpy stuff with leaf litter, a little grass in there. Just add some water, real natural looking. And it'll work like that. It'll work real well like that. I've already tested it. And then this is full of Blue Star Inlers as well, but they're gonna be all hidey in this guppy grass, maybe. You act like you're feeding them. Oh yeah, they're gonna be, oh, maybe not. It's not gonna be shy. Yeah, there you can see them. Bunch of those. And then next to them in this tank, I don't think we're gonna be able to see them. Oh, there they are. Yeah, these are some rare tetras, machioensis, something like that. I got those from Dana Ken Aquatics. I had them for since the old house. And a lot of these fish are from the old house. At least my breeders and stuff. And then this one is quite unique. Purple looking, brown kind of color. I don't know what's going on, but my guess is it's from sulfur. Because I have seen, and I got sulfur in my well water, and I have seen this tank over here do the same thing, as well as on this barb tank where purple will collect up onto the side of it. Now, I don't know what really triggers it, it's very odd, but it doesn't harm the fish. It doesn't cause any problems. Matter of fact, when it happens with my barb tank, that's when the breeding and the babies usually pop up and they're usually eating off of it. And I have gone with no water change with this before and it just actually settles out and eventually clears up. So that tank that was purple before, it actually cleared up, turned clear, and then now it's in and back to another green water process. Those cycles still, I think there's a lot to be figured out with some of this stuff because that's a mystery for me. Definitely a mystery for me. But it does got some rainbow fish in here. We're the Pagai Village. All right, so that's the rainbow section of that rack. And then we got 340s here. Which starting from the top, make it drop. Yeah. The Glossolapis maculosis. Some young juveniles, you say back for clutch. I try to keep separate generations from separate parents, especially with these rare fish, so I can deepen their gene pool later and as I go through time. And then up underneath them, we've got more. I bet you can't guess it. Chelnathernia Pugai Village. Cause they've just been breeding like crazy over at this rack. Real easy to scoop up the babies. I'm about to show you that real soon. And this is actually my Cole Neo Caradina tank. I don't know if I can see. No. Oh, hiding. Or these guys have gotten too big to start eating. At least the smaller ones are to the point where the shrimp can't breed as much. But they're mostly red and blue coals. They do got lots of space in there. And you can see I've ex been experimenting with lights too. And below them, we've got more Glossolepis maculosis. Younger ones. And then next to the 40s, we've got the 75, six of those. 
Which this leads me, we'll start here at the bottom with the Chilnathernia Pagai Village Rainbow Fish Tank. Which here you can see why it's so easy just to grab babies from these guys. They're just constantly tons of babies just sitting at the top of this across the whole tank. Which this is Brazilian Pennywort. And then the Bacopa Monerai has started to invade it as well. You can see where it's browning from being in a battle. Which I don't know if I want to keep the Brazilian Pennywort going and or just let the Bacopa Monerai just take over this whole level of this rack. Given enough time, I think it could take over this whole level of this rack. And then we'll mess with the uh, Brazilian Pennywort elsewhere. Which are going to be kind of hard to see here through this glass. This, for some reason, wants to be fuzzy camera. Like, it doesn't make sense why my camera is doing this. Let me see them a little better. Get them up in some light and into a real proper display setup. They'll shine for you. These are beautiful, beautiful fish. You can see that one's kind of got his colors turned on. Nice display showcase fish. I'm sorry, you guys, for my camera. I do not know what it's doing. I had to quit filming yesterday just because it was annoying me so much. <sighs> but there's those. And then next to them, we've got the super rare Onatania Cernergo rainbow fish. These guys are awesome. I can't wait to get these guys up into like a tank more in the middle viewing. Actually, the tank right above them, we'll probably put them in. You can see they got a lot of gold on them, but on the opposite side of the gold, they get quite a bit of blue into them as well. And these actually went for $65,000, a group of six of them, when they were first introduced or found. Pretty wild. And there's also Snow White Anubius in there. You got quite a bit of different, like, rare plants. But of course, it looks more like a... Which this, in real life, really is not this green. It's actually so much wider. It looks more like a pinto or a marble or something. It's just because you got to get it in the proper light to even get that white, white white out of it. And this is probably one of the biggest part of a cribs I've ever seen. I've had that for, I don't know, seven years. Then up above them, I've got a rainbow fish that jumped from one of the tanks behind it. And then there's actually a ton of fairy cichlids in here. There's one hiding right there. Which they've actually engineered, like, look how they dug up the tunnel, changed the elevation. Created a little fortress in there with these rocks and that sand. Pretty neat looking. So, I don't know. I've been wanting to get rid of them just because they're so shy. I hardly ever see them. I do see them when I'm at my desk. Because there's lots of viewpoints here in the fish room. And you can kind of see through a lot of these racks. Oh, he was out, but that air conditioner scared him when it turned on. I heard it switch and he took off. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, see. You can see that big boy now. So this is about the only time I really get to see him. Even when I'm feeding, look at him. And I get some size on him. And you know, this is no filter, no water change. Watch, we'll go to walk up on him and... Oh, it's still there. Still there? Still there? Come run. And that crip in the middle there, that's actually a mutated nuri crip. It's a rare crip. Really beautiful. These guys keep it all dirtied up. And above them, I've got black mollies, lime green endlers, masses of amounts of guppy grass. We've got sword playing in there. You can see there's tons and tons and tons of babies in here. Black mollies and lime greens. So that's a really cool tank. I love that tank with all the babies. And then next to them, it's a bit cloudy because the Brazilian Pennywort have picked through a lot selling to you guys. And also the shrimp have gone crazy in here. As you can see, they're just all over eating and trimming up the Brazilian Pennywort. There's actually probably a hundred CPDs in here as well. 
I don't know if we'll be able to see them very well or if at all because what they do is they hide and they go back and forth in the back. Oh, there's one. Where are they all at? There's a group in there I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm not getting them all to come out, but you can see here in the basket, there's some groups in there. Look, at, they're already in breed mode. They're doing their thing. And this is just a floating basket with some foam zip tied to it. And last but not least, the tank up underneath them loaded, loaded with Taiwan Lily. And also a ton of Micropacilia picked us, the AKA Swamp Guppy. But look at the roots from the Taiwan Lily. I love this stuff. This is great breeding material. Awesome breeding material. Then there's also this sort of like leaf litter that comes from the roots and stuff of the Taiwan Lily. It has become like this new dirt up underneath this, which is really cool. And I do actually got a couple still planted, but mostly they all just float. They used to be full of planted ones, but they just reached their way up to the top. It's a little white. Snow White Anubius in there. Do you see that sensor flash? Yeah, look at that. That was weird from the camera reflection. Yeah, another Snow White Anubius. And now that brings us to the guppy in Inler Rack over here. And yes, we will get to the pond area. But here on this first guppy rack, this is 1620 longs. And what's neat about this is you can actually see down through all the tanks which eventually when they get loaded is going to be really cool looking so starting from the top make it drop couldn't help myself these are the magical dalmatian guppies i call them magical because of the sheen that they get you can kind of see it on the tails of the males there really really well and then next to them we've got the dark moon Dumbo Half Moon, or Dark Dragon Dumbo Half Moon. They've got a bunch of babies in there with them as well. We got some of those in the other rack I showed you earlier. And then next to them, we've got the Arctic Blue, aka Volcano Guppies, whatever you want to call them. Really, really cool. It's kind of like this blue and pinkish, orangish color. See the males just firing up there. That ambient light really just does it for these guys. And next to them, I've got a bunch of baby Pingu babies. So we'll see how these grow out. Which underneath them is their parents. And if you notice in these setups, I've got rock piles in them all. But I did finally meet a rock I did not like, which is this stuff. It's kind of got like this mica, which is really sharp and I think these guys pick at it, and if they ingest it and it gets lodged in wrong, it causes problems for them. So I will be transferring that out here sooner than later. That's actually what these buckets are for. They hold my rocks. I'm not seeing the pingu male right now, and I have had some of the bigger ones fade off on me, which there was some albino snake skins in here as well, which I do still got some younger babies here. My camera would like to focus, but it doesn't. You can see a younger one. Camera's bonkers. And then we got more volcano guppies, more of the magical guppies, more of the pingus. This one's empty. This has, these are kind of like the albino galaxy tigers, but I can't remember their other name. Instead of being like more of the sheen of blue, these are more of the sheen of red. And he was really presenting to her. Look at that pattern. Beautiful. And next to him, same pair. I like to get two pairs at least. That way you can keep the genetics well. There we go. Jeez. Finally got the focus. And then up underneath them, I've got these grains that I got from the IFGA president that's in my club. It's the International Fancy Guppy Association. Lucky to have the president in our club. 
Pasco County Club. And if you guys are ever interested or in a big city, check out and see if your city has a fish club. Or if you're in a small town near one. I've got two tanks of those. Absolutely loaded. That female is massive. Here's the male if I can get it to focus. Keep forgetting I can get to the side here. There, you can see him. So we got two tanks loaded to them, yard sand once again. And then this tank is actually, this tank is full of tiny pagai village rainbow fish. Can't help but throw them in there. And then we got a rando in here. Random guppy Dumbo here. I think it was a Santa Claus which a lot of this is actually empty here but it is kind of neat because this rock that i used in it all came from near the pond and i left it dirty but then the mineralization like started floating on top of the water as you can see here but after a while fell down into this crusty cake but you see there's none in this tank because these guys had chewed it all up which these guys are rainbow tiger inlers. This is a strain I created a long time ago, as I mentioned before. Blue star inlers and rainbow tiger inlers. And lined them out. Really cool, beautiful inler. A lot of pattern, a lot of color. And then the next two tanks of them are empty. And I'll probably do two tanks of each. But up underneath them here, I've got the lime green inlers. So they're a lot like the black bar in there, but have more green to them. We've got two tanks loaded with them. And nothing next to them, nothing down there. And then to the end here, these are actually some really special fish. These are albino galaxy guppy, rainbow tiger in their mix. This is something I have been working on and did at the old house, but I never came out with it for you guys. But they got some really unique tails, kind of like a rainbow tiger handler, but different. A lot different. But still working on these. These guys, my camera would show them to their actual glory. <laughs> Hold still, buddy. And finally, last but not least, the pond area. So this is a 470 gallon Boswell pond, temporary pond, viewing panel in the front. It's kind of hard to see right now with the glare, but you can still see in through it. Although I've never really cleaned it. There's a whole enormous amount of rainbow fish. Shelly shell dwellers in here. Cynodonis lucipennis. Actually a bunch of CPDs in here. There's endlers in here. Um, there's a Congo tetra. Emperor Tetra. It's a breeding trap for the Lucipennis. But this is all, it's really hard to see. This is a massive amount of pogo stimmen. Just a lot of octopus. Which algae has been starting to take over the top of it. As you can see there's a ton of growth there. I normally run the two lights on here, but let's go ahead and throw on all four. There we go, all four are on now. And I don't usually keep all four on because they will grow all that algae. That's a big reason why I have all that algae is because I left those all on last time I turned them on. But anyways, this is all temporary. Eventually I'm gonna actually do a real custom pond here. But plant-wise, you can see this pogo stemming and how it's taken over like three quarters of the whole thing. But then in its competition is this Huteroy Crip, which is a rare Crip. 
really bullied. You can see smaller fish. That's actually a CPD there you saw. Quite a bit of biofilm. Mostly just gets top offs. And some of these fish have got some size on them. There's Nuri Crip down there. There goes some inlers. Rainbow fish playing around down there. Congo Tetra. Some kind of Glossostigmata. I think it's the Japanese species though that grows like super, super slow. And that's actually a coral putty. Let me see the shelling. So there's a ton, a ton of life within this pond. It's gonna be pretty wild to actually break this down and collect what's out of this. This is kind of like my retirement for fish that have been breeding for me for a long time and or like um, fish that may have been born with a bent tail or may just have issues. Kind of like a retirement tank for fish. And catch all. Look at personal. Also, some bulbitis down there that I'm trying to get it to grow out. There's quite a bit of it around there. Dun, 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 dun. Look at tiny little baby half beaks. Yeah, there's actually my breeding group of half beaks are in here. And this is how I get my babies. Just go through here and collect them. So there's a mouth. These things are gorgeous. See, he's got this red on his head. Oh, come on, buddy. Got those black fins. Red spot on his head. A little view from the back side here for you. See how that guy is? He's getting old. See the shellies? They just come out in the open water. And around it, of course, I've snugged up some other things. Here I got a 29 gallon. This has got my pair of Millennium Orange Albino Rainbow Fish, which I need to focus on breeding these guys more and more. They're tricky because the color of their skin and the light with the young, you gotta keep them dark to a certain age. And this is empty. I was hoping to get some Pygmaea babies out of it, but they did not leave me any. The next to uh, this, I've got some Sterilite tubs, but I've got a wood frame around them. That way they don't bow out. See how that thing's bowing like crazy? And I gotta watch it because I don't want that to bow break and poke that thing. That would just be a catastrophe of bad events. So I do have a wood frame around these. Which in here, I've got a bunch of rainbows. And next to them, I've actually got another breeding group of dwarf neon rainbow fish, as well as just a ton of pearlweed. We're not going to be able to see them because of that pro weed. And last but not least, we got the Mole Man Eye Crypt in here. And I don't know if we'll see them well, but the Cottle Punk Tatus. A little Tanzanian cichlid in here. And they have been raising quite a bit of babies for me, which has been nice. But that takes care of the pond section. And this has probably been the most frustrating fish room tour I have ever shot, I do have to admit. But I'm glad I got it done and that you guys can see it. And I'm sorry for the fuzzy camera. Not sure what happened. It's literally still giving me problems. And yes, all the sensors, all the lenses are clean, but I can't really be affording a new camera right now. I'm not a huge channel. Like I'm a good sized channel. And with your guys' support, makes all this possible. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, hit the like, share this. A lot of this is about to change, and it's about to get really amazing in here. But I need y'all's help to do it. So thank you, thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one.